Orlando may be better defensively than the OKC. Rut roll. Based on what you saw Friday night, minus KD, minus Bradley Beal. Wolf, what is the best guess, reportedly, of KD's return? How long can the Suns last, especially yeah. in the Western Conference? Where, oh, by the way, Houston is 10 and 4. Oh, by the way, the Lakers are 9 and 4 after having won five straight. The Nuggets are right behind the Suns. And then you have the T-Wolves, the Grizzlies, the Kings, the Mavericks. The Mavericks are 500. They've won two in a row. They're going to get hot at some point. You can't just all of a sudden go into the doldrums in an extended losing streak. It's not that the Suns won't figure it out at some point when they get healthy again. It's where will you be in the playoff chase? And what will that mean when it goes comes down the stretch? Are you going to be lamenting these games you lost due to injury in November? Yeah, I don't think so, Paul. I, I don't think so right now. I, I think it's still so early in the season right now. There's still so much time, so many games in front of them right now. I see your point, Paul. I mean, I understand it. But KD, when this went down, you know, he, they thought that he was going to miss probably two weeks. Two weeks, may, maybe three weeks, was was the estimate that, that at least I was hearing that was out there. No, Mel, that wasn't it. No, it was just the two weeks. Okay, I yeah, yeah. I, I, but I, but he I said three. No, make don't make. No, it no, 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 no. I heard two weeks, but yep. again, um, some of the whispers that were out there as well. Three weeks, maybe that's what it wasn't is. Wasn't it and two weeks until he gets reassessed? Correct. Wasn't he get yes. reassessed yes. at yes, the two-week mark? Yes, yeah. it was. But most people were reading into that as it was going to be two weeks. For me, I, I, I'm hearing more like it's three weeks. We'll see. It's a calf. Calves are really questionable. You never know with a calf. It's such it's such a hard muscle. Once you pull that thing, you can actually relapse much easier than any other muscle that I've been around, okay. even the groin. And, the, and it's the same injury that sidelined him at the Olympics, so obviously there's a little added concern. Yes, so if of you're, course. If you're Coach Bud, you're trying to figure out what do I do, and then coming off the loss, the OKC on Friday night, you make a few adjustments. For example, you start the game with a couple of bigs, right? Nurk and Plumley. In fact, here's what uh, Coach Budenholzer had to say about that. Just, you know, a chance to, to maybe up our defense, you know, up our physicality, um, you know, scramble around, still take care of the boards. I thought, you know, tough tough night for foul trouble a little bit for our bigs, but, you know, when Nurk was, was in, you know, him and Mason working together, Oso, Mason, Nurk, you know, those three guys kind of rotating and playing a lot around. Uh, we haven't done that a lot, so it was, uh, you know, good to see them do that. Oso, more please. Mason? More, please. Nurk, not so much. Does this system fit Yusuf Nurkic? Uh, him being out there as a big beyond the three-point line, I know he lost the weight, but the weight, <laughs> he does not look comfortable. He certainly hasn't been productive. There, It's been yeah. a roller coaster, and right now, I mean, uh, you know, yeah, I, there's a real possibility that the other two bigs are going to pass him in playing time in minutes at least. If I was Coach Bud, that's the route I'd go right now. Yeah, Paulie. Listen, I'm not going to disagree with you on this. I, I am not. I, I think Nurk is still trying to adjust to a brand-new system as well. I, I'm honestly surprised. I was honestly surprised when the Suns got off to a 9-1 start. I was surprised. Okay, again, all the moving pieces, all the variables that a new culture brings and a new coach and a new coaching staff and trying to go out there and, and learn how to do it on the fly without Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal now. It just, there are so many moving pieces right now. And for a team that's trying to find its footing, moving pieces, Paul, that's not good. And I think, honestly... I don't know if Nurk feels that or not, but if anyone has taken a step back with this new culture, it's been big Nurk. No doubt. So yesterday, they lose in Minnesota, 120 to 117. Tyus Jones, 37 minutes, 13 points, 11 assists, and this comment on taking the L. Yeah, it's frustrating, uh, especially because I can play well enough to win. Uh, but, you know, that's... That's the league. You know, that's basketball. You know, stuff happens. You know, we got to be ready to go tomorrow. 
So you're one and three minus Durant. Tyus Jones, next question. How can the Suns figure out how to win games without KD and Bradley Beal? Watch the film, uh, continue to, to learn, continue to grow, see what's working, see what's uh, not working, where we need to improve, um, and be ready to go tomorrow. Uh, you know, no one's going to make excuses for us. Uh, no one's going to feel bad for us, so we got to be ready. Yeah, you got to be ready right now. I mean, honestly, this I think is important. At some point in time, could you possibly see KD missing a game? or two at some point in time. I mean, that, that, that's just logical. It's something that is going to happen um, going forward. It's important. What if these games, you suddenly need these games? Down the road, Paulie, think about it. Down the road, you need these games. You need to win these games. It's it's really important in regard to the playoff seating. Or that's what I was saying earlier. That's where nothing. I started. No, I, Paul, I'm just saying at some point in time, you're going you're gonna to need to learn how to play without KD what if he gets into foul trouble in one of these you know important games of course you're going to learn to play without him I think it's an opportunity for this team to actually get better overall to learn how to play without him do you change this system do you change the offense to cater to Devin Booker do you do more of what made D book the player he is. That's that's a great question because I think it has an awful lot to do with what we're seeing from Book right now, Paulie. It just seems like Book is a little off. He's he's out of rhythm, I think. A little disjointed he looks right now. And, and it almost appears to me that these point fluctuations that we're seeing from Book, wild fluctuations, Uh, 12 points in one game and then comes back and scores 44 against the T-Wolves. You know, I just, it seems like to me there are these gesticulations in points. And I think it's Book trying to find his way through this new offense, through this new scheme, without Kevin Durant. And oh, by the way, without Bradley Beal as well. It just, you take those parts out of... um, out of this offense, and suddenly everything seems to change. Because to understand Devin Booker and the 44-point explosion yesterday, 27 in the first half, you have to go back to Friday night at the OKC, where he was held scoreless in the first half, where after the game he said, they were trapping me. I'm not in the business of trying to score against double and triple teams. We need to make the right play, and hopefully we make some shots and make them pay. I left that behind in my early years. End quote. And a lot of people were a little uh, put off by the fact that, you know what, when you're minus two of the big three, you have to be the big one. You're the one who has to lead the way. And guess what? you got to find a way, figure it out, even against double and triple teams. And so the question is, if you're Orlando tonight, what are you going to do? Are you going to go out like what Minnesota tried and Chris Finch unthinkably? Didn't double him a whole bunch, especially in that first half? Absolutely not. You're going to go back to what the OKC did Friday night and then see what the Suns are able to pull off. Yeah, just just listen to these numbers right here. The 14 games that Devin Booker has played in, and here's his total points. 15, 23, 21, 33, 40, 28, 13, 22, 13, 23, 31, 18, 12, 12, 44, (laughs) 12, okay? (laughs) I said that twice. It just, there's wild fluctuations that are in that point total. And I think that is a lot of what we're seeing right now. He's trying to figure out how to do this without Bradley Beal and most importantly, Kevin Durant. By the way, Coach Boonholzer was asked on Friday night about Devin Booker. He said, well, they put two people on him pretty much every time, and we didn't take advantage of the size advantage with Nurk, who went 0 for 7 with four points. There was a follow-up question. I think it was Dwayne Rankin. Why didn't you take advantage of the size advantage? And the response was, uh, good question. No answer. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.